Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the JMA and Cephas V2 uh, long range models for today's um, first video. So it's JMA Friday, it's the last one of the year, the last JMA Friday of uh, 2019. Uh, and like I said, we're going to see what the JMA and the CFS V2 models are showing for the next uh, four weeks, the next month. Um, in a moment, this is going to take us into the second half of January, of course. Uh, so, coming up after this one, there'll be the week to 10 day uh, video update that will have all of the regular features. Right, so we'll begin with the uh, JMA 500 millibar height anomalies uh, from the Arctic and North Pole view down into the mid latitudes. Uh, these are broken down into weekly periods. So the first week period will take us from today, the 27th of December, through to the 3rd of January. That's the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just there. Arctic is around there, and the mid latitudes around there. Um, red, yellow, and orange extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. More intense the color, the stronger the anomaly. So in the week ahead, we see that we've got a large ridge of above average heights, that's high pressure sitting over and to the south of the UK and covering much of uh, Europe. Out in the Atlantic, we've got the low average heights, we've got an area of low pressure through the middle of the North Atlantic jet stream doing something a bit like that. So we're on the mild side of the jet stream and we're close to an area of high pressure. And that high pressure will be giving us lots of dry and potentially very mild weather. But of course, under the ridge, if you're centred right up under the middle of the ridge in winter, it can actually get cold quite quickly because we have really long uh, nights. The days are very short, so heat can radiate out in space very quickly, depending on whether it's a cloudy high or a clear high. I suspect this will be largely a cloudy high as we're going to drag up the winds from the middle of the Atlantic. That will probably bring a lot of cloud with it. Um... So I expect dry and mild, uh, really, and the mod, when we look at the temperature on it, is bound to look very mild, but it's not always quite as straightforward as that under high pressure in the winter. This is week two, taking us from the 3rd to the 10th of January. Uh, again, below average heights are in the Atlantic and going to the north of the country as well. Above average heights centred over and just to the south. Jet stream is doing something a little bit like that. So it's still anti-cyclonic influence, perhaps, perhaps slightly less uh, of the high pressure influence in this particular week, 3rd to 10th of January, could be a little bit more on south, especially the northern parts of the country, and still looking essentially quite mild as well. And then week three and four looking like this, it's the 10th to the 24th of January, and if this is right, we're in for quite a dry January actually, high pressure bend becomes centred right over the top of the country. Low pressure is out to the northwest. We do something like that with the flow and with jet stream. Uh, so we're under a big ridge of high pressure there. We have anticyclonic influences throughout January, but particularly as we get through to week three and four, or attempt to 24th, high pressure really takes over and centers over top of the coach. So this definitely breaking us out of the deluge. If the Germain is right, then the deluge is pretty much over. Uh, now it's going to be getting drier through the next uh, four weeks. Now, this area of high pressure is centered right over top of the country. So by this point, I suspect this could be getting quite cold under that area of high pressure. Again, the model will almost certainly say milder than average. But with high pressure rooted over top of the country in the middle of January, I think we could very quickly start to get cold with that, generating frost and fog. It's a strong signal as well, uh, interestingly. Normally, week three and four, the signal is a little bit weaker due to um, how far out we're going. Uh, and also, in fact, it's a two-weekly anomaly, which can often be a bit transitional. But that's a very strong signal for weeks three and four from the JMA for high pressure to be taking over. Let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude uh, view and uh, see what the temperature precipitation anomalies are showing. So we come back to week 1, 27th of December to the 3rd of January. The coming week has this area of high pressure over and to the south of the country. Low pressure is out to the north and west. And we're dragging up these southwesterly winds, which I think could be bringing quite a lot of cloud with them. Um, 
It's a very mild week being forecast by the JL. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite this mild, to be honest. But on the scale, uh, we go into the orange colours, which is quite unusual, actually. We don't often go into the orange and red colours. So that's like three to four degrees above average that the JMA is forecasting for this week. Very mild across much of North America as well, and Canada. Uh, really mild across much of Europe. So it is an extraordinarily mild scene uh, across most of the Northern Hemisphere, actually, for these closing days of December and into the opening days of uh, January. For us, yes, modest forecasting, three to four degrees above average. That is exceptionally mild in the coming days. Whoops, let's have a look at the precipitation anomaly. So, a bit of a north south split with rainfall. Northwestern parts of the country, uh, wetter than average. Southern parts of the country, drier than average. You can see where the high pressure is sitting, obviously, just there. And you can see where the jet stream and the weather systems are there out to the north and west. So, a little bit of a north south split with rainfall. Um, and just generally, high pressure is in control of the weather, especially so across southern parts of the country. Uh, week two is the 3rd to the 10th of January. Again, we've got high pressure just to our south. A little bit weak compared to week one. Nevertheless, high pressure is still more or less in control of weather. Temperature anomalies are still significantly mild on average. A really mild week coming up. We're around two to three degrees above average on the temperature scale. It's really mild across uh, most parts of Eurasia as well. Bit of a change in North America, though. Uh, so most parts of the United States are mild of an average, but going northwards into Canada, we see that much of Canada going really cold, actually, through this week. So a bit of a pattern change coming for northern parts of America, particularly Canada, um, as we go from the 3rd to the 10th of uh, January. With cold air really starting to dig in across uh, Canada in particular. For us, though, remains very mild. Precipitation anomaly is more or less driving average, still a little bit wet average for Scotland, but otherwise it is actually a milder uh, and drier than average week that's being forecast there once again. <coughs> Excuse me, and then we go through to week three and four, which is the 10th to be 24th of January. And uh, we get this big area of high pressure being centred right over top of the country. Uh, so have a look at the temperature anomaly. It's still a little bit above average, even for weeks three and four. Nowhere near as much as it is in weeks one and two. Nevertheless, we're still around a degree or so uh, above average. However, we're under a big ridge of high pressure. So I think in the middle of January, under a ridge of high pressure centred over top of the country, it will probably start getting quite cold. So, middle of January, probably going colder with frost and maybe increasing risk of fog. It's also, of course, drier than average because we're centred under a large area of high pressure. So, a very mild start to uh, January, but not overly unsettled except in the far north. And then, probably staying relatively dry into the middle of the month, but starting to get a little bit cooler under that area of high pressure, perhaps. That's how the JMA is looking, but what about the CFS V2? So again, these are 500 millibar heights and they're broken out into wheat peers. The first wheat peer takes us from today, the 27th of December, through to the 2nd of January, the coming week with above average heights, high pressure over and to the south of the country, below average heights up to the north and the northwest. We do something like that with flow and with the jet stream. Uh, so potentially quite cold down here around the Black Sea and in towards Greece and Turkey. But actually for us, we close out of high pressure. It's relatively dry and the winds are wafting up from the southwest. So it could become uh, very mild in the week ahead. Week two looks like that. It's the third to the ninth of January. Above average heights then sort of to the south southwest. Below average heights more towards the north. Um... Probably strengthening the jet stream a little bit and turning unsettled across the northern parts of the country down in the south and the southwest under this area of high pressure. So it should still be mostly dry in the south and remaining relatively uh, mild as well. Week three is the 10th to the 16th of January. Above average heights then over uh, France, Spain, Portugal. Below average heights again remain up towards Greenland and Iceland. Draining up those southwesterly, so that could be another very mild week there. This is a very mild first half to January 
if this is right. And week four rounds it all off. It's the 17th to 23rd of January with below average heights then out to the northwest, above average heights centred through much of central and southern Europe. And we're still pulling in those west southwesties. Little bit of high pressure suggested up towards Scandinavia and Svalbard. Not strong enough though to ward off those west or southwest winds. That's a very mild uh, January, even into the second half of the month being predicted there by the CFS. A little bit at odds with the JMA uh, for weeks three and four, which is much stronger with that ridge of high pressure and centering it right over top of the UK. So these are the temperature anomalies. And look at this, week one, 27th and 72nd of January, exceptionally mild. Again, on the scale, we're going to around uh, three degrees, perhaps above average, maybe even uh, a little bit more. Really, really mild week coming up. Uh, week 2, precipitation anomaly is the 3rd to the 9th of January. That also is above average by around 2 to 2.5 degrees above average. Look how warm it is across the whole of Eurasia. I find it difficult to believe that the entire... <laughs> sort of the entire um, entirety of Eurasia, right from the UK and Ireland on the Atlantic coast over towards the east of Siberia on the Pacific coast and all areas in between are going to be over three degrees above average. But suffice to say, if it did come off like that, it would be absolutely extraordinarily warm. Uh, for the time of year, I mean, still cold in central Siberia, of course, but warm compared to average across a whole of uh, Eurasia. That is quite an extraordinary temperature anomaly. Week two, uh, week three, I should say, is the 10th to the 16th of January. And we look like this. So then we're more sensibly above average, still above average, but more sensibly so at around sort of a degree to two degrees, one to two degrees above average. That's more sort of sensible. Notice it's becoming quite cold in northern and western parts of America. Still looking warm, though, over on the eastern side of the states. And then week four is going to be the 17th to 23rd of January. Again, it's a little bit above average, um, but the anomaly is coming down a bit in the second half of the month. So by this point, we're only like half a degree or so above average to one degree above average. Definitely the, the anomaly to average is coming down, but it's still a bit above average even then. Uh, and still looking really uh, significantly above average across most parts of, uh, of uh, Eurasia as well. So a really, really mild January coming up, if this is right. Um, we've got precipitation anomalies with CFSV2. So week 1, 27th of December, 2nd of January. Most parts of the UK are dry than average. It's a little bit wetter than average, though, in the far north of Scotland. Week 2 is actually a bit more unsettled. This is the 3rd to the 9th of January. Rainfall anomalies are above average for northern parts, country near normal elsewhere. That is a more unsettled week being forecast there. Week 3 is the 10th to the 16th of January. Again, very close to average with precipitation, a little bit wetter than average in the northwest. And then week 4 is uh, actually close to average or slightly above average with rainfall. Again, that's the 17th to the 23rd of January. So not as settled with the CFS, uh, definitely for sort of weeks 3 and 4. As the JMA is, the JMA is much stronger with the ridge of high pressure and will therefore be drier, but also potentially colder under that ridge of over. Model can't see that cold weather that would occur under that ridge of high pressure in weeks three and four. JMA model can't see that. Um, it would be low level surface cold, inversion type cold generated by the ridge sitting over top of the country and allowing the heat to radiate out of space quite quickly. So the JMA, out of the two, the JMA is the drier, colder option, um, but not Arctic or Siberian cold, not snowy cold, just frosty um, and maybe fog type cold with the JMA as we go into January. Whereas the CFS is just very mild and a little bit more unsettled too, I think, with the CFS, uh, slightly less of an influence from that area of high pressure. They both agree on an exceptionally mild end to December and start to January, though. 
That's it then. So that's the final JMA Friday of the year. We'll do it all over again next week. But of course, by then, we'll be into 2020. We've got your week's 10-day video update coming up later on this afternoon, including all of the regular features. So come back for that then. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.